Welcome to Red Ice Creations Radio. My name is Henrik Palmgren and this is Internet Talk Radio recorded from the west coast of Sweden. You will find us online at redicecreations.com. We have a new show for you every Thursday and Sunday and our entire archive of uh, regular shows is up there for free. And uh, if you like the shows and what we do here, we have a lot more programs available for you in the subscribers section. So take a look at that. Last week we had Paul Levy with us talking about George W. Bush and our collective psychosis. Uh, Very good stuff, so check that out if you missed it. Now let's kick off today's show. Welcome. Today we have our good friend from creativecosmos.org back with us. Writer, musician, artist and spiritual explorer Christopher Moores is here for his monthly visit. And it's also a pleasure to have back with us our special guest from last month, Shab Danor, uh, also a musician, teacher and a spiritual explorer. And uh, if you didn't, didn't hear our last show, uh, I suggest you head on over to my site, redicecreations.com, and uh, check out our archive shows with Chris and Shabda, and you'll get all the background and the full story, so to speak. Uh, and today I hope uh, to get into a few of the, of the things. I, I was sent a couple of articles uh, uh, here, here today, actually, and that was written by Shabda, and... and this is about his studies, I guess, into the, the Kabbalah, and I hope to get into also speaking about the Tarot and maybe Theosophy. And, of course, if there's time, we can also expand our topics, talking about spiritual art and how uh, mind-opening and heart-expanding art can help us to grow and awaken to new realities and bring a new perspective to life. But uh, th- there's many stuff, uh, many many topics, so to speak, to get to today. So let's bring on our guest, uh, maybe one one at a time, so we know who we're talking to here. Chris, our regular, first up, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you back. How are things at the Creative Cosmos? Boy, man, they're more spacey than ever. I, I feel like today, uh, even right this moment, I'm more... Uh, open and more in tune than I've ever been. I mean, Shab and I have been here getting ready for the show, and I just feel great. Awesome. Chris is, li- Chris is literally glowing, just <laughs> like a <Cheshire> cat. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, sounds sounds wonderful. And, of course, Shab and Or, uh, really enjoyed our, our last uh, show together. I'm looking forward to, you know, dive deeper into a few of the topics that we didn't get to uh, last time. So, uh, again, a warm welcome um, back to the show. Oh, thank you, Henrik. Uh, it it's, was very, very fulfilling for me to be on last time, and so excellent. Uh, I'm I'm hoping we can keep this going for a while. Absolutely, it's <laughs> it's great to have you both here again, back with us. And uh, as I said, I I read a few articles, very nice, uh, written by Shabda. And maybe we can begin there right away, and and just to ask you right on top here, Shabda, wh- when did you first begin to to uh, to study the Kabbalah? Well, I uh, I was let's see this about 1972. Uh, I went to a Dallas uh, occult bookstore. I can't even remember which one, and it was one of those situations where this book literally fell off the shelf and into my hands. At least that was my (laughs) perception of it. Mm -hmm. And it was a book, it was Paul Case's uh, book entitled Tarot. And it was basically a a textbook on the inner meanings of the, what what is called the major arcana Mm -hmm. in the tarot, the 22 major cards. And, uh, There was a little enclosed pamphlet inside the book that was a separate item that just sort of hit me between the eyes. And what it was, it was um, an invitation to join, to take a, a, uh, a mail order course from an outfit called the Builders of the Aditum. I'm not sure hmm. I'm pronouncing that right, but or it may be aditum. I've never heard anyone use this word, so mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I'm pronouncing it right or not. Hmm. Uh, that's the one drawback with uh, um, particularly studying Kabbalah. 
uh, through the mail. I got lessons mm. every every two weeks. Yeah. And the one drawback is that you, it, it uses so many words that were foreign to me yeah. that I don't know if I'm pronouncing them rightly or not. Probably mm. not. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> if you don't really See, hear someone use the word who's, who authenticates how it's supposed to be pronounced, you don't know. You don't quite know. But it was, <laughs> it was packed full of very, very interesting information. Mm. Uh, Particularly the idea of the tarot, especially the 22 major arcana, mm -hmm. as being in, in enveloping all the ancient wisdom in 22 symbols. They're just pregnant with meaning once you unlock, and it takes a while to learn to unlock what the symbols mean, yeah. and it speaks directly to you through pictures rather than text. Hmm. For, yeah, because you know, you, uh, I think you wrote uh, in in one of your articles that that the tarot was devised as a uh, as a pictorial representation of uh, yes. Kabbalistic doctrines, and that's really interesting considering what you just say that you know you have 22 in the major arcana, and then of course we have 22 paths in the Kabbalah, right? Yeah, there are there are 32 actually uh, paths to. Uh, to the ancient wisdom, the first ten are the sephira themselves. You know the mm -hmm. the ten the ten circles on the tree. Yeah. And then the other twenty two paths are the pathways connecting the circles. So when you add it all up together, you get thirty two. Hmm. Interesting. And there are thirty two aspects of human consciousness or any kind of consciousness, whether it be human or, or otherwise. Hmm. And uh, that's the basis of it. Yeah. And once you get into this, you think, my gosh, this one diagram has encapsulated how the universe was created and all the rules and all the law, all the... the uh, uh, Conditions of the matrix that we live in, mm -hmm. it's all there. Hmm. And one, and the, the the idea is that once you understand this, you can reprogram the matrix. Yeah, you wrote some very. In, by the way, uh, you know that uh, humans actually have uh, 22 chromosomes. Also, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> Yeah, that is. Can yeah, kind of connect. There's that? that's. Uh, it's interesting that you would bring that up because uh, I uh, I've just recently discovered another website that really captivated me. It's called Wingmakers. Have mm -hmm. you ever seen the Wingmakers. I, dot I, com? Yeah, I have. It, it was a while I was uh, visiting that site, but uh, th this is kind of a uh, kind of a flash introduction page where you get to right away. Isn't that correct? Uh, say that again. Uh, huh? it, 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 the first page you get to when you get to Wingmakers is kind of this really fancy yeah. designing flash. Yeah. I think uh, I, I think yeah. I remember the site anyway. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they have uh, uh, a series of of art, the the the, the Wingmakers pictures, which are which. I fell in love with right away, and I I just took them all down right off the internet and put them up in my in my front room. <laughs> I have them all. There are 24 of them, mm -hmm. and they're supposed to be at least what it, it seems to me they're the spiritual uh, uh, significance of each point in our DNA. And it was interesting. Just today, I was just finishing a David Icke book where he explains that scientists are only interested really in about 4 to 5% of what DNA is, and the rest of it they call junk DNA. Yeah. And, of course, this sent up a big red flag for yeah. David. He says, no way. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He says, this is not junk. This is where the real stuff is, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, 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 particularly being able to master the, ma the, the at least the matrix that you experience 
doesn't have to be the matrix that everybody else experiences. Yeah. You can reprogram it <laughs> yeah. and get out of some of the absolutes that we're suffering under. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. get out from under any absolutes. Yeah. I mean, you know, we were just talking about this. This is part of what we were. We like to warm up for the show by just like doing like two or three shows <laughs> where the <laughs> in the morning. And, yeah, we were just talking about how it's just uh, you know you open up a- areas of space by you know this is what we do on the air here by talking about these we give life to these ideas and we open up space and if then somebody is exposed to that space it changes everything because once you're exposed to something you can't really be unexposed to it and it just becomes even it doesn't matter even what you think about it really it's just out there as a possibility now and uh, Mm. maybe one day your brain pathways will run through it and uh, and that's just more territory you know I sometimes talk about that mental territory you know you just that's how you grow and expand you just keep looking for new territory i mean that's why i love to find you know new books that excite me or uh, awaken something in me or take me on a journey because that's just uh the expansion the growth and then that becomes a part of your own uh what you bring to creation this is how you breathe life again into all you know that was beautiful that you study you know all the people in the history or our music or artists or mm. philosophers sages you know people that have done great work that are our predecessors you know you uh, just drink deeply of that as they say and make it a part of your being and then anytime you create something you're moving the ball forward for all of them you're continuing the work which is the point you know to keep it going to keep it going and to bring it further and further and higher and higher and the more you can do it just shines brilliantly you know <laughs> yeah absolutely um you know they i think i heard I think about robert anton wilson i heard a talk with him the other day he was talking about also the uh, the the idea of of reaching of how to reach more people just as uh, as you said there chris to kind of um hopefully to just get it out there so more and more more and more people who might not have heard about it actually you know get exposed to to the the ideas i guess you you could say it's like a fear of constantly i guess preaching to the choir so i mean yeah. that is a bit of a dilemma i guess to kind of reach new people but i mean do you guys have any ideas on how to do that i mean just go out in the street and and yeah. yell or <laughs> well, uh, well i've been telling all my friends and i have had some feedback that they did listen to the show and they and that they're they're you know now aware of your network yeah yeah uh, the That's red awesome. ice and and uh, i'm sure they'll they'll you know go back and and hear other uh, other broadcasts oh that's that's yeah. awesome yeah and like a little a little different spin like <clears throat> what what you were saying made me think about something i've been reflecting on lately is just how how we uh, you know we ha- we have this ain't angle of expression and and uh kind of a real affirmative way of reaching out but also just <clears throat> you have to make it a regular practice of how you are in day-to-day life i mean in in any day we go out and we're exposed to many many different people and many different situations come up and one of the things we we, we do is uh you know continue to refine our own way of meeting the world and yeah. maintaining uh what we're doing you know maintaining who we are you know spirit in the flesh and awake and alert and and aware not believing you know we're moving we're flowing and we're going out into the world and you know it it's it's a special trick to find the balance uh 